Are you jealous of these multilink selectors like probably is seen on uh, Bavarian Simtek or Usher or others where you can select a preset with this, for example, here dash, traction control to map and so on, and then adjust it with a thumb rotary? Well, today I'll show you how you can set that up on every steering wheel. So what do we need? We need, well, a steering wheel. We need sim hub. Get the paid license. It's not expensive and it's definitely worth it. You need control mapper within sim hub and either VJoy or little Arduino flashed as the bridge for the control remapper. If you start sim up on the left side, control mapper, if you cannot see it, go to add remove features and then make sure this control mapper here is enabled and this uh, show and left main menu is checked. I would recommend to get an Arduino. They cost like literally nothing on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description that you can buy. It's a little USB stick like device that you just plug in your PC. What I recommend is go to the control mapper section, select output mode to bridge and then click this, then check which ports you have, write it down or something, then plug in the USB Arduino device and click refresh port list, and then check which port is new. That way you don't overwrite something else. So in my case, this is COM6, I haven't plugged it in, but I know it. Then you can select whether you need 128 buttons or 384. I'll go with single controller, I understand, blah, 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 blah. And then you click flash, you hear the disconnect sound. Or you probably don't hear it if you got a new Arduino, but it will quickly flash the device. And now you have the bridge for the control mapper setup. Then I'm not gonna make a tutorial of control remapper. I made a video on that. I'll link it in the description as well. But in the control remapper, we need to set up a few roles, which are called, in my case, I made it called mode switch. Uh, category and then mode switch plus minus and then I have four roles in this case mode switch is where you basically select in which preset you you want to be role one is uh, increment of one thumb encoders role two decrement of one thumb encoder three and four is on another thumb encoder you can set up I think as many as 12 buttons or so uh, I also set something up called view mode but we'll talk about that later but then um, on your steering wheel obviously you want to have these things assigned so go to map controller scroll down wherever you have and assign buttons on your steering wheel and then we will need a plugin it's called mode switch plugin somebody clever made this so we can use this multi-link functionality thing with sim up control remapper with every wheel the person is called donuts and coffee so you want to go to to the github with the link of course it will be in the description just download the latest release scroll down download the dll if you like the plugin scroll down if you want to support the creator here's a paypal link in case you want to buy the guy some coffee and then grab the dll from your download folder and copy it into your sim hub folder which should be per default c program files x86 sim hub and then just paste it here after that, you will have to uh, restart SimHub. You will get a pop-up that you need to enable um, the plugin and show it in the sidebar. If you didn't do it again here, add remove features, it will be in that list. So what do we need? Go here and then we see key bindings. We see mode settings and some other stuff. So to quickly uh, go through the settings, key bindings is obviously where you want to assign all the buttons. And I would recommend to not do it with the buttons of the joystick here, but do it via control remapper as well. So go to control mapper, go to the mapping assistant as overlay because then it's easier to assign things. Just go back here. And then if we clear next mode here for now, click here to configure and then mode switch for me plus is on this button. So I just click it on the overlay and then this is assigned. I've done it for the other ones. So this is plus, minus, and then roll one, two, three, four. And if you need more buttons, you can have up to 12. After you've done that, we have the different modes here available. Since I assigned two thumb rotaries, I have two functions. You can separate these by a semicolon. We'll talk about that later, why that's important. So in my case, I have traction control one, traction control two assigned to, well, traction control one, increase, decrease, traction control two, increase, decrease, and so on. So let's say we want to add ARB front and ARB rear as well. Then I would set that up here as ID four, then select my roles for ARB front increase, ARB front decrease. These are control mapper Binding. So if you have nothing in that list, you need to set that up in control mapper first. ARB rear plus and ARB rear minus. I'll click apply. 
And now I would have four different modes with two functions each. So the two traction controls on mode one, then the third traction control in ABS on mode two, brake migration and regeneration on mode three. And mode four is the uh, ARBs for the front and the rear. And you can see here, for example, if you want to assign four thumb encoders or so, you can, you can have up to 12 buttons or encoders or whatever. I only set up two, that's already confusing enough for me. Then we have a setting which mode should be available when. So this is the default. So we would have to add mode four here since we just added that, click apply. But for example, if you drive a GT3, you do not have brake migration, you do not have regenerative braking, you do not have ARB front and rear. So it doesn't make sense to show these. So you can, for example, here in a GT3 Porsche, only show mode one and two in this case. I haven't set up any custom commands. If I understood it correctly, it only works for iRacing chat right now. So yeah, whatever. So now you're probably wondering, yeah, cool, but how do I actually see what's going on? We'll talk about that now. First, control mapper, we quickly check if everything works. Um, see here, roll one, roll two, roll three, roll four, and it should also, since we are, you can see it on the display here now, I can actually not see it because my camera placement is, sh maybe now it's a bit better to see. I have an overlay that shows TC1 and then my values here increase and decrease TC2 to um, plus and minus. If I go to the next mode, we have TC3. TC3 uh, minus ABS on this side. And if I go to this mode, we have brake migration. You get the idea. So in order to see what you're doing, you will either need a dashboard or a wheel with a dashboard, or you can also use it as a sim hub overlay on your monitor. I, I've done a specific dashboard for this. If we quickly go to the dash studio here, I called it overlay mapper. Let's quickly go into the edit. Um, there are two possibilities. I have set up two texts on the left and on the right side that will show me the current mode. Either if I switch modes, let me quickly go to the view where you can see better here. So if I switch modes, uh, you see now TC1, TC2, TC3, ABS, regenerative braking, ARB front and rear. So these labels will pop up when I change the mode. These labels will also pop up if I actually change something here. So only, only the one that you use, ARB on the right, for example, now, or if I go to the left, then this one will show up. I've implemented a delay of like three seconds, so you can still see what, what you just did. There's also one thing that I did. If I just press my mode button, it will show me what current uh, settings are active on the multi-selector. So ARB front and rear, or if I change it, uh, brake migration, regenerative braking, and so on. So how do you set that up? It's actually pretty simple, even though it looks a bit complicated. I can uh, post this dashboard on the Discord if you want to use it as a starting point or on my website that will launch soon. Uh, I'll put the links in the description, of course. Uh, Discord is linked there anyways. Once the website is live, I'll link the website there as well. So I just added a text block. Visibility is true. Like it will it will show something for 3000 milliseconds. Either when I switch the mode, that is the uh, property from the new plugin. Or if I use a roll one or two, that's my left thumb encoder from the control mapper. So this will then show the current label. The text is also received from the plugin. So you can just use this here, return, and then the property is donuts mode switcher plugin dot switch mode CSV. And we need the CSV because we have two functions, TC1, TC2, or TC, uh, yeah, TC1 and 2. And the left one is the first string in the array. So index zero, if we go to the right one, you will see this is index one. So if you have more than two, it would then continue with index two, three, four, and so on. And then for, for this pop-up, I have made a group also with the text, same formula as on the side ones here. And then I just set the visibility of this when I push the button. You can also use this exactly like the labels on the left, right, and so on, uh, just 
depends on what you want. I assigned one button to view mode, which is the center rotary push in my case. And that will then show the, the pop-up. If you think this is too short for two seconds, you can, for example, change this to five seconds here. Okay, click save. And then uh, it will stay a little longer. Um, and now you're probably like, oh, but I want to use my lovely dashboard or my DNR endurance dashboard. I don't want to lose it. You don't have to, as you can see. SimHub has the functionality to layer two dashboards on top of each other. How do you do that? You go to devices, you go to your steering wheel, then you go to screen settings, then you scroll very, very much down and then there's an information overlay. Experimental feature, turn that on, select the overlay mapper here. And now you have, for example, the DNR dashboard, or if you want to use the lovely dashboard, it works just fine, but you get the overlays when you when you use these buttons. So we'll go back to the new DNR endurance dashboard. Excellent dashboard. I can highly recommend to check it out. I really, really like it. It looks very, very clean and modern. But I quickly would say we'll hop into the game. Uh, I'll show you that it actually works. All right, here we are. You can see now if I switch the modes, it will only switch between the two first. Traction control one, two, three, and ABS. Well, you can't see it properly, but here, uh, if I turn it further, it will just stay in the last mode that it has. That is because we are in a GT3 car and we have assigned that in the mode switch plugin. LMU GT3, we are in this Porsche right now, one, two. Let's say um, you are now in a hypercar, you want to have some other modes. It's very, very simple to configure. You just um, pretty much launch into the game. Let's take a hypercar here, Ferrari, whatever. Start race weekend. And now the game will automatically uh, detect in which car you are. So if you click get game and car, you will now see LMU, Ferrari, AF Corsa. And then you can uh, select which modes we want to have here. So for example, if you only wanted mode one, three, and four, because ABS, there's no ABS, there's traction control three, there's no ABS, but just to, uh, to show you how this works, click apply. And then if you change the modes here, you'll see we will go from traction control one and two to brake migration and regeneration to ARB left and right. And yeah, and where are we? Traction control one and two. And you can see here, this is now changing traction control. This is changing TC power cut. If we go to brake migration, this changes the brake migration in the game and the region and rate of braking and ARB left, right. It's a multi-link like on other steering wheels, just done very cleverly in SimHub. Great plugin. It is probably more confusing to explain how it works than actually using it. It takes a little bit of setup with the SimHub control remapper, setting up the buttons and then assigning them in the plugin. But after that, it's super, super easy to use. And like that, you basically get an unlimited amount of buttons, uh, which is nice. Um, even if you do not have a wheel with a display, you can still you can still use this and maybe show it on your monitor instead. How do you do that? You just go here, click more, uh, convert to overlay. And then it will be available in overlays. You can click this overlay is too large. What the hell? I mean, it should probably still work. Uh, it's designed for, for 1280 by 720, which doesn't make a lot of sense as an overlay. So if you want to use it as an overlay on the monitor, maybe set it up a little bit smaller. Um, but this should, like, I don't know, put it somewhere, click OK. Uh, and then we're going to just force the visibility to, to be able to see it, even though it's too big. Uh, but now if we change things, you see it will just display on the monitor instead. So you don't even need uh, a vocor in order to use these use these things maybe i'll actually create a little a little overlay because uh, let's be honest nobody really looks at the screens anyways and it's probably more useful to always have it visible on on screen somewhere in the corner or like here the push oh that's <laughs> that's very big as an overlay but yeah you get the idea um like this uh, you see this this is this is an older hyper gsi hyper p1 revision a 
it doesn't have the functionality out of the box, but using SimHub, you can just do that with every single steering wheel, which I think is genius. I guess the video was too fast again. Uh, you can <laughs> play it in half, half the speed maybe, but no, honestly, if you have any questions how to set this up, if you can't get it to work, come to the Discord, you can ask there, write a comment down below. I'll typically try to answer most of them when I have the time. But yeah, I really thought this is a, this is a cool way to get this functionality on every steering wheel if you want to use it. And it's not that complicated to do. That's it for the video. Uh, if you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and all the things. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you on the next one. Happy racing.